Welcome to the Spy X Family Comparison Series! Today we'll cover the very first episode of this highly anticipated show which covers the entirety of the first chapter from the manga. While one chapter might not seem like much, it's incredibly long, weighing in at about 66 pages, excluding some title pages. This page count won't be the same with future chapters, but for this episode's adaptation it is absolutely filled to the brim with straight adapted material. There's really not much room for Cloverworks and Wit Studio to go off script much. That being said, there are some interesting changes mixed throughout. So so without further ado, let's get right into the comparison. Funny enough, our first change actually has nothing to do with the anime, as this diplomat is being driven to the embassy. See, when this originally hit Shonen Jump, the first panel shows them driving down a city street road, but once the manga was published, this panel was revised to show them driving down the highway instead. A worthwhile revision, as they'll be flying off said highway in just a second. And that's not the only change here. From the manga to the anime, the brief exchange between these two in the car is different. Instead of just commanding the driver to head to the embassy like he just hopped in the car or something, now in the anime he asks the driver how much longer until they arrive at the embassy. Not that it matters, they're gonna fly off to their deaths anyway. The nation of Ostania should really install better guardrails. Though these shadowy figures seem to blame the event more on an assassin, as we can actually see some of their faces a little better this time, except for the guy who's in the very back. Also, when we look at the map showing the boundary between Westalis and Ostania, it does look a little different, but the speech bubbles do make it hard to know for sure. From here, we'll fast forward to the scene of Robert having a date with his girlfriend. Oh, nope, they just broke up. And just when she was wondering if they'd ever get engaged. Actually, unlike the manga, she never really even gets the chance to finish her line, as Robert here basically gets right to calling her an idiot. Pretty funny, considering we can now clearly see the reaction of those who successfully got engaged. Now that's some ironic duality. Not only is he done with this woman, it also appears that he's done with this identity as Robert throws away his glasses in an alleyway, reverting back to Agent Twilight once more. Which means it's on to the next mission as the scene moves over to the train station. The layout of this station is a tad different now as multiple train tracks can now be seen. And that revised layout actually gives us a better representation about how punctual Twilight is as the train to Berlin will leave in approximately one hour from now, which gives him plenty of time to decode the cipher in the newspaper he was just given. I'm actually really impressed with how accurately the anime recreated this paper. It's equally ineligible to the common eye and most of the keywords are pretty much intact. And we even get a revised version of the front page now, which hilariously says watch out for spies. Also, later on in the train, after Agent Twilight gets surprised and spits out his drink, for the first time we can actually see the full name of the guy from his previous mission, Anakin Haywood. Not that it matters much. It's a good thing that there are no longer people sitting in front of him on this train. He would have likely caught them with that coffee spray. It's after that spray that we get our very first missing line from the manga, in which he would normally tell himself to regain his composure, but more or less directorial talent makes up for this vacancy as they move into a tunnel, dimming the scene essentially affirming his regained composure. I also like how when the train moves out of the tunnel, the narration says he's a hero with no shadow right as his reflection in the window disappears. Now at the orphanage, some elements have been removed here, like how these kids no longer vocalize their thoughts wondering who this guy is, nor do they wipe their nasty boogers on his back anymore. In the anime, they're a lot better behaved, kind of like Anya here, whom Twilight, aka Lloyd Forger, is about to get introduced to. And of course, Anya being the telepath she is, she comes up with all the right answers for Lloyd to pick her as his new daughter. Also, when she picks up that newspaper to prove her intelligence, Lloyd now says in his head that it should be too difficult for her to do it instead of out loud. Not that it really matters for Anya, as she gets words like symplectomorphism and casual closure with ease thanks to Lloyd, even if the spelling is a little off. Now that Lloyd has accomplished the first step in his mission, he starts running through the ground rules with Anya. I love how quick and simple their interactions are. From one vacant line from the manga, you can tell why Lloyd is insistent on Anya calling him father in the first place, but he doesn't push it anymore once she gets it wrong. As a matter of fact, we'll be seeing a lot of small little inserted lines like this one mixed throughout the chapter that don't always make their way into the anime, but I'll only mention the important ones. Now that Anya finally has a place to call home, she gets right into watching Spy Wars as Lloyd sits down in the back. Except he doesn't actually sit down in the anime. Why would he, after all? He's just gonna head out in a second anyways. Much to his dismay, however, it looks like he'll be bringing his new daughter along with him through an area that looks a bit different from the one in the manga. 
This actually constitutes some changes, like the object Anya hides underneath, as well as the fact that Lloyd didn't immediately have a bag of peanuts ready once Anya breaks down crying. The placement of the shops and such are a little bit different now, and because of that the peanuts will instead be a to-go snack as they can now be seen mixed in with the rest of the groceries. From there we get a vacant manga panel of him going into the library and ordering every book available on raising a child, as well as a vacant panel of him fed up with reading it. And with that, the day finally comes to a close as we move right along into day two where Anya and Papa are having their first little scuffle. And just when Lloyd decides he's had enough and walks out of the apartment, that doesn't stop Anya from following him out the door in the same perfectly comedic tone. Perfect recreation aside, as you can see the interior layout of this building is a tad different, like where their apartment is in relation to the staircase and the like. This actually leads to Anya finding some different spots to hide in when she's trying to follow her dad. Like underneath the stairs instead of on top of the stairs, as well as a hole in the ceiling with a newly added ladder put in. Huh, so that's how she got up there. In the end though, there's not much she can do about a giant object blocking the door. Poor Anya. Though the whole experience must have been more draining for Lloyd, as he looks a little out of breath when he finally gets to head out. But in the anime, he doesn't look nearly as worn out when he finally makes contact with his informant Frankie. As for the shop this guy owns, you can tell the design of it, as well as where it is in relation to everything else, is a tad different as well, as Frankie gives some info on Anya's past. Once Twilight looks over that information, Frankie is quick to poke some fun at him, saying how well Anya and him suit each other. Except a quick menacing look from Twilight makes Frankie clarify it's just for the mission of course. This isn't the case in the manga though, as he's a little more confrontational and asks Twilight what this look of his is for. Hey, at least he didn't give her the same look that Anya's giving in the house right now as she blankly stares at the poster she bought, as well as the door that Lloyd thought he properly secured. Too bad for him because Anya getting in here is going to cause him a lot of trouble later on. Now that Twilight is back, he's quick to notice that something is awry from the slightly different track marks coming from the object he used to block the door. And when Lloyd opens the apartment door, we now get a much better view at where our two perpetrators are actually hiding before they start to make their move. Really, this fight sequence is the most authentic panel-to-panel -panel recreation I've seen for key animation of this caliber. The only real change is that Twilight's fedora gets crushed by this guy's bat this time around as Twilight goes for an uppercut against him. But while the action is extremely authentic, from a directorial standpoint, it's stands well on its own. Right after this guy gets uppercutted, the shot doesn't end there as we pan over to the other guy who just revealed himself behind the couch. While that transition is pretty slick in its own right, I like how we break from that cut for a brief second into another brief second cut of Twilight getting his trusty tuna can ready before continuing the previous cut of this guy firing the pistol and then back to the cut of Twilight with the tuna can. It's really fascinating when anime do this sort of technique because since the king is picking up right where it left off, it feels seamless and not at all jarring. It is the same cut after all, it's just being put in different spots. Of course things like this can't be overused, but it really displays the split decision abilities Twilight makes during major moments like this. After baiting out the first shot with the grocery bag, he stays as mobile as possible while heading to more obstructions in his enemy's vision, all while disabling them more with the tuna can. And without breaking any momentum, he grabs a nearby chair and puts all his weight into bashing the guy over the head with it. The momentum is displayed incredibly here, as it took quite a good amount of frames for him to reset to a neutral pose by the end. I couldn't find any solid accreditation for the key animation here, but whoever did do this cut deserves massive props for exacerbating movement that was more or less set in stone by the mangaka already. Even if the interior layout of the apartment itself is a tad different, it's still an incredibly faithful recreation of Twilight's first action scene. Funny enough though, from there we go off script a little bit, as he no longer thoroughly checks Anya's room before moving into the next room. Instead, he spends most of his time contemplating in his own room, as he now immediately spots Anya's favorite toy that was originally sitting up in the bed. While in the anime, it appears like there's no doubt in his mind about what he should do next, the manga actually shows him pause a little more when he considers if he should go and find Anya in the first place. That being said, since he actually spotted Anya's toy on the ground, he now bends over to pick it up, giving the missing tooth intruder an even better opportunity to go for the cheap shot. This guy's boss is pretty screwed up using Ani as a hostage to force Twilight to do their dirty work for them. See, this guy agrees with me, but this guy is also a prime example of why you should keep some things to yourself. From there, Anya decides that it's worth reading this guy's mind, but the anime doesn't actually let us listen in on his subconscious like we can in the manga. But never fear, Anya, because here comes your papa to save the day. I love how both the anime and the manga were really good at tricking us into thinking that Twilight was the one on the ground here, but still adds in context clues like how the intruder no longer has a broken tooth, or how Anya is just looking at him but not the guy on the ground. Excellent bait and switch material. From there, Twilight makes a run for it, this time locking the bad guys in a room while he gets Anya to 
safety. This is something that the manga doesn't show us, and it's a worthwhile change considering Twilight had all the time in the world to get Anya outside and talk to her for a bit. But before that, Twilight finally realizes why he hates the sound of crying kids as we cross dissolve into some of Twilight's war-torn childhood, surrounded by some different types of artillery. His resolution in becoming a spy was so that kids didn't need to grow up like him in the first place, as we get the coldest cut thus far of him tearing off the mask to display the newly committed man himself. Now that the enemy has finally broken through the anime exclusive door, we get the last action sequence of this episode as the bad guys trip over some lines triggering a flower smoke screen. And from there we have some movement changes, mainly involving this guy as he watches his buddy get taken out. Except in the anime he didn't even get that luxury as his friend was taken out while his back was turned. Now in the manga this is about as far as this fight sequence goes, but in the anime it's extended a bit as we can now see how Twilight took out this guy before going on to his next victim. The scene was so foggy that you might not even have caught Twilight's movements the first time around. In that respect, the studios did a great job with these alpha effects as it makes it just hard enough to follow Twilight while still letting us as the viewer watch the movements themselves. He's so fast he's not giving them any opportunity for them to see him, and he even says as much in a line that unfortunately didn't make its way into the anime. I really do hope the anime gives us better views of this demonic face in the future though. So damn cool. From there it's checkmate for Edgar as the demonic Twilight points a gun at the back of his head. Edgar was not nearly prepared enough for a situation like this and even though he actually has a gun ready this time, Twilight quickly knocked it out of his hand in an anime exclusive fashion as he starts talking about Edgar's daughter, the woman he dumped at the beginning of the episode. This man is clearly playing no games at this point, and even makes it doubly clear by now shooting the anime exclusive pistol he already knocked out of his hand. This essentially ends Twilight's emergency mission, and now Lloyd and Anya can finally reunite. A reunion that Lloyd really wasn't expecting as he makes up an incredibly stupid lie that he was trying to shop at an abandoned supermarket. Papa a really big liar. But nonetheless, Anya wants to go home with him and no one else. So much so that she never lets go of his leg at all like in the manga. She sticks to him like glue all throughout the remainder of this scene. Now that the family affairs have been straightened out, it's time for Anya to take her entrance exam as the credits slowly start to roll out. And as much as Anya would love to use the surrounding kids to answer all the questions, they're all dumb as a rock. Luckily for her though, she's had plenty of time to prepare for this test so that even without her esper prowess, she would have no problem in overcoming this hurdle. And of course it all pays off as Anya passes the test and both her and Lloyd get to celebrate together. Not for long though, as it doesn't take much for Lloyd's exhaustion to get the better of him. I was actually curious as to how Anya was alright after he fell, but in the anime they clarified that he safely put her down before completely conking out. Now that the the first episode is starting to come to a close, we start up a pseudo ending that more or less gives the credits some more time to roll out over the next minute or so. All the illustrations that are shown during said ending are shots that we've more or less already seen, except for the last shot of the new neighborhood they're now living in. And after that shot, we can continue adapting the rest of this chapter as Lloyd lays lifeless on the couch and Anya watches her dead father in horror. It sucks that the most she can do for him at this point is get the mail and try to use that to wake him up. Real wholesome stuff. Something that I'm sure both of them really needed, even if Lloyd doesn't show as much when he wakes up and Anya goes flying off the couch. But the anime decided that would be too mean though, so she stays perfectly safe on the couch now as she finally gets the chance to give Lloyd the mail. Mail that will lead into the despair of Lloyd finding out that he has to procure a wife now, which thus leads into the funniest line of Anya saying that, well, mother doesn't exist. And well, that'll bring a proper close to this episode, as well as chapter one. All around, this episode was the most faithful to the source material out of any other series I've covered thus far. I had to dig real deep to find some meaningful changes, and well, that's a good thing. It means that avid readers of this manga should be pleased with the adaptation, so long as Cloverworks and Wit Studio keep up the same energy. But more than that, I'm more curious about what everyone else thinks. If you guys want to see more Spy X Family content, let me know in the comments down below. It would also go a long way if you guys liked the video, share it with a friend, and subscribe if you haven't already. We're on our way to 25,000 subscribers subscribers, and I couldn't be more thankful for everyone's support. So again, thanks everyone. You guys are the best. Well, that's it for me. As always, I hope you all have a fantastic day. This is Registry, signing off.